Hello, my name is Matthew Carmona. I'm a professor at the Bartlett School of Planning, UCL, and chair of the Place Alliance, an organisation which campaigns for place quality in England. In this talk, I'm going to introduce the idea of place value. Now, half the world's population live in cities. That's over four billion people. But do cities offer the quality of built environment that we should expect? I've spent my working life studying the way we design cities, and I would argue, no, they don't. Too often we fail to understand the value of well-designed places, or even what good urban design might be. Oscar Wilde famously derided a man who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. When designing and de developing our built environment, too often the focus is on the price of everything rather than its value. Or value only in a very limited sense, short term and economic. Over the years, I've had many local politicians, planners and community representatives contact me at UCL to ask, how can we convince others, normally those with the money, that a better designed built environment is something worth investing in? It has value, in other words, beyond its price. Where is the evidence, they ask? Having written endless, very similar emails, sympathising with those who inquired and trying to address their questions, my frustration got the better of me and the Place Value Project was born. So let's think about cities. Cities are made up of a huge diversity of places that people inhabit. Our individual experience will depend on who we are and on where and how we live. Most significantly, it will depend on whether we live in places of prosperity or places of poverty. But whoever we are, the quality of places, and most specifically how they're designed, will profoundly impact on our experience. This experience of place is fundamental to our physical and mental health and sense of well-being. Place underpins economic productivity and opportunities. Place dictates the social and cultural experience available to us, or the complete lack of it in some cases. Place has an impact on our democracy, community togetherness and empowerment. It impacts on environmental emissions and pollution and influences real estate markets of all types. The quality of places, specifically how they're designed, influences all these things and more. But don't believe me, I'm already convinced. The Place Value Project aimed to give those good local politicians, planners, community representatives, professionals and others the ammunition they need to convince those with the money. So some of you are probably thinking, what is this guy on about? What does he mean by place quality and good design? Well, be patient, I'll get to that. First, however, I need to briefly explain the Place Value Project which centres around the building of a new online resource, Place Value Wiki. Now, Place Value Wiki brings together hard empirical research evidence to show that the sorts of impacts that I have been talking about are real, and not just a woolly wish list of benefits quoted by those like myself who are already convinced about the importance of investing in a high-quality built environment. The initial data to populate the wiki derived from a number of systematic searches that attempted to find evidence that linked some aspect of quality, for example, the planting of trees down a street, with some aspect of value. Perhaps that as a result of planting those trees, the street was more attractive uh, and more people took exercise by walking down the street uh, because it was a more pleasant place and therefore there was a health dividend. A huge number of possible sources of evidence were identified, and these were whittled down to just 300. 300 of the most empirically robust studies conducted by scientists from all around the world. The aim was to compile and synthesise the evidence and to make it easy to find and use. But in the process of compiling the wiki, a new perspective both on value and on quality as it relates to the design of the built environment was revealed. So let's start with value. The value of something is often equated to its worth in narrow economic terms. 
But value also has a much broader meaning that equates to its importance or significance or to the benefit derived from the thing being valued. Another way of thinking about value, therefore, is the degree to which different qualities of the built environment impact either positively or negatively on different policy priorities. The wiki consequently gathered evidence together under four big ticket policy arenas. The sorts of things that governments everywhere are, are concerned about with the health, society, the economy and the environment. These are the areas on which elections are won and lost, at least usually, as they impact so directly on the daily lives of citizens. The other side of the coin is place quality. Most of the research studies included in the wiki focus on particular very limited aspects or dimensions of what is a broad set of quality concerns. For example, the economic impact of a park, whether children play more if they live in a cul-de-sac, whether more decorative facades make us happier as we walk down a street, or whether movable uh, seats in a public space might encourage us to greater sociability. One way of answering the question, what is meant by place quality, might be that a well-designed place is that which returns the greatest value to its users, helping to sustain them in healthy, socially rich and economically productive lifestyles that touch lightly on the environment. The empirical evidence we found naturally coalesced around 23 themes under the four big ticket policy arenas and led to detailed findings about what types of value are created. These, in turn, turn out to be hugely diverse. For example, Better quality places lead to better mental health, less stressful and more psychologically restful environments, leading to reduced depression, anxiety and anger and reduced psychosis. They also lead to lower rates of crime, reducing opportunities for burglary from homes, increased natural surveillance and lower street crime, less fear of crime and stronger perceptions of safety. Also to property uplift, for example, in the office sector and to reduce vacancy and depreciation influenced by factors such as walkability, external appearance, design innovation, street connectivity, and to reduce energy use and associated carbon greenhouse gas emissions through the creation of urban forms that need less heating and cooling and require less private vehicle travel. I don't have time to go into all of the different types of value added by a better design built environment, but if you want to find out more, then there's an absolutely fascinating paper on place value in the Journal of Urban Design. In the time I have left, let's focus on the sorts of places that deliver that value, and more specifically on the qualities that do so. To crudely summarise, rather than building this, the sort of place on the slides, sprawling, disconnected, single use, roads dominated, which deliver short-term profit for the landowner and developer, in other words, economic value, at the expense of the place, the evidence suggests we should be building this, compact, connected, mixed-use green, which delivers long-term place value and still makes a good profit. To help us understand this, it's possible to envision different qualities sitting on a ladder. The ladder climbs from those place qualities that should be absolutely avoided when shaping the built environment because of their very likely negative impact on place value. Car dependent and extensive forms of suburbanisation, heavily trafficked roads next to residential areas, absence of greenness, dilapidation and so forth. Here, the collective evidence is very strong that these are fundamentally bad for us as human beings wherever we live. Next, those qualities where the impact is as yet unknown or the evidence is in some way equivocal. Living in cul-de-sacs, in high-rise development, the best structure for our streets, particular architectural styles which are better or worse for us, uh, spaces shared between vehicles and pedestrians, amongst others, all of these factors, in some way, we simply don't have the evidence yet to know whether they're good or bad. 
care should therefore be taken to avoid being too prescriptive on these issues in our systems of design governance, namely in the sorts of policies and guidance that local and national governments adopt on design. Then we have qualities where there is a good degree of evidence that strongly associates them with the delivery of place-derived value of all types. There's a longer list of these, some of which are a little bit more intangible sense of place, pedestrian scale, architectural quality, street level activity, low traffic speeds, facade continuity, and so forth. The nature of the evidence means we should confidently aspire to deliver these through built environment policy and development related decision making. Finally, there are those qualities at the top of the ladder, a much shorter list of these, about which the collective evidence is definitive. These are fundamentally good for us. Public transport connectivity, walkability, a mix of uses, low levels of traffic, greenness, bikeability, and compact and coherent patterns of development. These qualities seem to be so fundamental that they should be required as a means to maximize place value through good design. Putting it all together, gives us the complete ladder. Let me share a couple of examples from here in England. First, the RRBA Stirling Prize winning Goldsmith Street scheme in the town of Norwich. Unsurprisingly, Goldsmith Street ticks all of the boxes to appear at the top of the ladder. Such environments are fundamentally good for us. They're connected, walkable, green, mixed, low traffic, compact and coherent, and they help to build a sense of community. They're good for us economically, socially, environmentally, and in terms of our health outcomes. But just three miles east as the crow flies is a second development called Miller's Field. No longer a field as, as the name might suggest, but everything that is wrong with much new suburban housing development in England and globally, it's disconnected, parking dominated, hard, single use, car dependent, sprawling and socially isolating. It's fundamentally bad for us, economically, socially, environmentally, and as regards health outcomes. So to some final conclusions, which can be drawn from the Place Value Project. The first reflects the overwhelming nature of the evidence, 99% of which points in the same broad direction Better place quality adds value in all of the different ways that I've mentioned. The impacts of place are indeed profound. They contribute benefits to society over short, medium and long term time horizons and reverberate throughout the lives of citizens across all socioeconomic strata and globally. A critical new insight when compiling the wiki was that place quality and place value are interlinked in a virtuous loop in which quality delivers value and value defines quality. This requires an understanding of place, quality and value that goes beyond our normal, more limited understandings of these concepts. It's an argument, as we've seen, that is backed by the evidence. A final conclusion relates to the profound impact on the lives of citizens. Place quality should never be seen as a luxury to be afforded only when things are good or only for the wealthy. Instead, it must be seen as a basic necessity of urban life, so important to our well-being that it should be the expectation of all. Ultimately, we can use this knowledge to advance the case for a high quality built environment when making place related policy, project or investment decisions. Or we can ignore it and suffer the consequences. Less prosperous, less sustainable, less ha ha happy and less healthy cities and citizens. So read the evidence, climb the ladder. It couldn't be clearer. Thank you very much.